Hi, and welcome to today's video, Fascinating World of Nanosheets. This is an image of uh, graphene, uh, one example for a 2D material. The scanning tunneling microscopy image of epitaxially grown graphene on silicon carbide. Epitaxy means uh, growing on a substrate, growing of crystals on a sub substrate. Um, graphene was predicted uh, not to be uh, producible, but it was discovered in 2004 with, uh, was a very simple method. Uh, it is a allotrope of carbon. A allotrope means a form of a chemical element. For example, allotropes of oxygen are O2 in air and O3 ozone. It so, uh, has a 2D monolayer structure, has sp2 hybridized carbon atoms. Uh, so carbon has uh, three p orbitals, and the third p orbital is part of a pi electron system with electron delocalization. That makes uh, graphene conductive. And the global uh, graphene uh, market uh, in this year is uh, 790 million US dollars. It is predicted to be a 3.5 billion US dollar market in the year 2030. This is another picture of uh, graphene, is hexagon structure, a flat structure. The CC bond length is 142 picometers. Um, the layers in the graphite with a multilayer structure of a distance of 335 picometers. For graphene, there are several methods for synthesis, uh, including top down and bottom up methods. Bottom up means uh, from uh, smaller atoms, and top down means, for example, from gra uh, graphite, so from uh, bulk materials uh, by separating the layers. There are many applications for graphene. These are some examples so for solar cells, LEDs, batteries, and filters. This is an animation of uh, two sheets of graphene. Uh, graphene is known for its high thermal and electrical conductivity. That's why it's very interesting for electronics. However, there is a danger of short circuits, and this is prevented by making hybrid papers with boron nitride nanosheets. A boron nitride is an electrical insulator. This is a picture of the Schottky barrier diode, um, that's a um, semiconductor junction diode. Uh, you can make uh, ferroelectric Schottky diodes from copper indium thiophosphate, also called SIPs, UIN P2S6 nanosheets. Uh, these nanosheets are made from copper, indium, phosphorus, and sulfur uh, by adding uh, iodine in a as a transport agent for agent for the transport reaction in a quartz tube, uh, which is then heated to 650 to 750 degrees Celsius. And the nanosheets are then uh, made from the crystals by mechanically exfoliating the crystals. This is how the exfoliation of uh, layered materials works. Um, you need uh, ultrasound assistant, assistance. And uh, the solvent is very important. Um, the solvent sheet's interaction needs to be higher. The actual energy needs to be higher in between the sheets. Then you can break the agglomeration and then you get the nanosheets. Another example for nanosheets, um, that's the ball and stick model of tungsten disulfide, WS2. Uh, in blue, these are tungsten atoms, and in yellow, the sulfur atoms. Uh, you can make albium doped um, tungsten disulfide nanosheets on silicon uh, for heterojunction infrared photodetectors. The albium increases the photodetectivity and the infrared light absorption. And the method to make this uh, compound is the chemical vapor uh, deposition. This is how uh, this works CVD, chemical vapor deposition in plasma. This is the substrate, and the uh, nanosheets are grown on this substrate. And for this, uh, the structure of the substrate is important because it uh, determines the structure of the nanosheets. And you need uh, to deliver this uh, at atoms uh, at a low speed to make sure that the crystal is uh, growing slowly and uh, is high order. That's how it works. This is a picture of a kirigami. This is a version of origami from Japan. 
This is used um, to build uh, 3D structures from folded paper. Uh, origami uses only folding technique. Uh, kirigami uses folding and cutting techniques. That's the difference. And for this uh, structure, no glue is uh, required. And you can apply this technique, uh, technique uh, to uh, tungsten disulfide nanosheets. There was a molecular dynamics a simulation prediction. And this predicted um, an increase in the tensile strain in uh, tungsten disulfide and a decrease in strength with uh, rectangular origami cuts. So this means, um, like with paper, you can, uh, with this method, you could uh, make nano sheets with enhanced stretchability. This is another example for nano sheets as bismuth selenide, Di2SC3. Its nano sheets are topological insulators, which means the interior is an insulator, but the surface is conductive. You have a chiral electron flow on the surface due to the quantum hole effect. And um, Bi2SE3 is a potential anode material for batteries. And it's a thermoelectric material, which means it's a material that can convert temperature differences into electric voltage. This is a diagram of the Moore's law. Um, you can see over five decades, from 1970 to 2020. A y axis uh, number of transistors is a logarithmic axis. Uh, you can see logarithmic uh, increase every two years, a doubling of uh, transistors on a microchip. Uh, the current technology is uh, called GAFIT. That's gate all around field effect transistor. That's a su sub 7 nanometer process technology. And the first principles calculations show that um, a silicon nano sheet. Panels, this dielectric um, silicon dioxide would have better properties than nanowire channels of the same material, of the same compound. This is a picture of the condo effect. Um, you can see the resistance and versus temperature. There's a minimum here at about 7 Kelvin or gold. Um, this effect was uh, discovered by Yoon Kondo. That's a scattering of conducting electrons by magnetic impurities. In this case, uh, these are uh, iron impurities in gold. And this effect is, uh, occurs in the quantum dots and nanosheets. And this gives uh, these materials a resistance minimum. And the scattering rate and the resistivity increases logarithmically uh, near the absolute uh, 0, 0.0 Kelvin. This is a picture of an unpolished magnesium oxide crystal. You can make nanosheets of magnesium oxide too. They have a high potential for optoelectronic devices. And there is a variant with um, doping uh, with boron nitride. This reduces the band gap. And better or gives better optical conductivity. And it shifts uh, the absorption maximum from UV to visible light. This is a picture of chromium uh, sulfide. It's a non stoichiometric compound. This is the formula to Cr2, SCr1 minus Xs. In this picture, uh, chromium is blue, uh, sulfide is yellow. And this compound is known to uh, prefer uh, 3D structures over 2D structures. And you can see there are metal metal bonds, chromium, in the chromium atoms. And an, a neural network potentials model. So crystal structure optimization was applied to this chromium sulfide compound and it predicts a stable structure for CRS2, for this stoichiometry, because half of the chromium atoms go into the van der Waals gaps. Now this is a very nice map of the chlorophyll R concentration on the world. Um, for example, in the oceans, um, green means higher concentration. And on land, uh, uh, maximum is again uh, green. And um, the photosynthesis was a big um, invention of nature 3.2 to 3.5 billion years ago. It changed the entire planet, uh, changed the methane atmosphere uh, to an oxygen rich atmosphere. And you can uh, 
make artificial photosynthesis with a silver doped nano sheets of nickel oxide. You can use that um, substance for the production of carbon monoxide. And um, scientists were able to uh, achieve an energy conversion efficiency of over 16%. And carbon dioxide is a very interesting uh, compound because you can make syngas. Syngas is a mixture of hydrogen and carbon monoxide. And it is a uh, very int uh, important, uh, for example, you can use uh, it for the synthesis of the chemical compounds that are needed by the chemical industry. And you could make uh, zero carbon um, iron, steel, um, with help of uh, certain gas that is produced with this method. This is the structure of perovskite. Perovskite, uh, this name has uh, two meanings. It's the name of this compound, calcium titanate, CaTiO3. Calcium is blue, oxygen is uh, red and gray uh, titanium. And perovskite is also the uh, name of the structure with this um, general formula, ABX3. Um, there are 2D versions of metal halide perovskites, for example, cesium uh, lead bromide nanosheets. And they have a potential for photo detectors, LED solar cells, and again, uh, the reduction of carbon dioxide to carbon monoxide. And you can make heterostructures with uh, 2D, other 2D materials, for example, graphene. The synthesis method for these uh, kinds of nanosheets is the ligand assisted reprecipitation, LIRP. That's another bottom up method to make these compounds. This is a nice picture of a scanning electron microscopy of uh, the compound methyl ammonium that bromide crystal. This is another example for the perovskite structure. This is a 3D atomic uh, force microscopy image of uh, multilayered palladium nanosheets on a silicon wafer. And this is, in my opinion, a funny uh, picture. It's uh, called uh, Monigami. Monigam it's a money origami uh, made of a 10 euro bill. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was today's uh, video about the fascinating world of nanosheets. You uh, can check out the links in the description field. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye.